Over the last few days, humanoid robotics basically split into two timelines at the same time. One side shows China pushing out breakthroughs so fast it almost feels unreal. Mind on turning the Unitree G1 into a full environment worker, navigating homes like it actually lives there. Unitree rolling out a wheeled G1D built for non-stop industrial speed, and UB Tech shipping hundreds of Walker S2 humanoids in what looks like the first real mass deployment in the entire industry. And then, right in the middle of all that progress, Russia tried to introduce its first AI-powered humanoid on stage, and the robot collapsed in front of everyone. Add the chaos from Brett Adcock calling out fake robots, predicting agility robotics will go bankrupt, and starting a full-blown feud on X, and you get one of the most explosive weeks this space has seen all year. So let's talk about it. All right, so everything basically starts with Mind On and the Unitree G1. This robot has always been a strong platform on paper, with its 23 degrees of freedom, depth cameras, 3D LiDAR, hybrid force position control, and a mechanical structure built for dynamic movement. People already knew it could run stable demos in a lab. The shock came from how MindOn decided to train it. Instead of the usual rehearsed motion loops that humanoids tend to repeat for cameras, they dropped the G1 into what looks like a fully functioning home and let it handle an entire chain of tasks without cutting to a new scene every five seconds. You watch it walk up to a window, align the hands, open the curtains in a smooth, continuous motion that does not feel robotic at all. Then it shifts into checking plants, adjusting its grip so the leaves are not crushed, and watering them without spilling anything. After that, the G1 transitions into office-like tasks, moving light packages with enough precision to keep balance steady while still planning foot placement for each step. The textile part is probably the most impressive because humanoids have historically struggled with soft materials. But here, the G1 pulls sheets off a bed, shakes them out, lays them flat, and navigates around furniture with movements that feel like part of the same workflow. There is no jerky stiffness, no torque spikes, no hesitation. Even when it interacts with kids in the demo, the movements stay inside predictable limits, which hints at a safety-focused control layer specifically tuned for soft interactions. MindOn still has not released a full technical breakdown of their training pipeline, but based on the sensory setup and the smooth transitions between tasks, it looks like they leaned heavily into environmental generalization instead of memorizing one-off tricks. That approach makes sense because a real home is basically unpredictable, and if a robot hesitates on every micro variation, it becomes unusable. What MindOn showed here looks like one of the closest examples so far of a humanoid functioning inside a real space without breaking the illusion that it belongs there. This whole moment also pushes the conversation into the real world challenges that decide whether humanoids actually make it into mainstream use. Battery life needs to last long enough for a full work session, reliability has to hold up across hundreds of repetitions, the robot needs to behave safely around children or elderly people, maintenance cycles must stay affordable, and the price point has to land in a range that normal households or small businesses can justify. MindOn's demo does not answer every one of those questions, but it does show a direction where the promises finally start matching what consumers actually need instead of what companies like to advertise. While that whole thing was going viral, Unitree dropped a completely different kind of announcement, the G1D, their first wheeled humanoid designed for fast, repetitive tasks. This thing is built for industrial zones, warehouses, service environments, retail spaces, anywhere companies want a robot that can run nonstop without the limitations of bipedal walking. The standard version stands in place, while the flagship version rides on a wheeled base using differential drive. That mobile version can hit 1.5 meters per second, which is about five feet per second, making it fast enough to actually keep up with real logistics workflows. Both versions range between 49.5 and 66 inches in height and weigh up to around 80 kilograms, roughly 176 pounds. The standard version carries 17 degrees of freedom, while the mobile version has 19, not counting the effectors. The arms are identical across the lineup, each with seven degrees of freedom and the ability to lift about three kilograms or 6.6 .6 pounds. The waist joint moves along the Z-axis up to 155 degrees and along the Y-axis from about minus 2.5 to 135 degrees, giving it a strong vertical range of motion that reaches up to around two meters. Vision is a big part of what they are doing with the G1D. You get a high definition binocular camera on the head 
and then two extra cameras mounted on the wrists. This setup lets the robot analyze objects from multiple angles, handle inspections, and carry out repetitive manual tasks without drifting off target. The effectors are interchangeable, with two finger grippers, three finger manipulators with or without touch sensors, and a five finger dexterous hand so the robot can switch between industrial tasks and more delicate actions. The flagship model also includes an NVIDIA Jetson or an NX, pushing around 100 tops of AI compute, which is plenty for onboard real-time decision-making. Battery life goes up to six hours of autonomous operation, giving it enough uptime for full shifts in warehouses that need fast cycles. Unitree also released a full software platform alongside the hardware. It handles data collection, annotation, task management, simulation environments, distributed training, and deployment. Trained models can be exported into the robot with almost no extra integration work. This is part of a bigger strategy, where they want the G1D to not just run tasks, but also act as a data generation tool for companies that want to build new AI pipelines around real-world performance. Now, while China was showing off polished demos and industrial rollouts, Russia somehow delivered the exact opposite energy. Their first humanoid robot with artificial intelligence, called A-Idol, fell straight to the floor during its official debut in Moscow. This happened on November 10, while staff members were guiding it on stage to the Rocky soundtrack. The robot lost balance, collapsed, and even left pieces on the floor. Immediately after the fall, the staff rushed to cover it behind a screen while dragging it off stage. Video of the whole thing spread across Russian tech forums and social media, turning the unveiling into a spectacle for all the wrong reasons. Adol is supposed to represent Russia's attempt to enter the global humanoid race using mostly domestic components. The developers claim it integrates movement, object manipulation, and human-like interaction using embodied artificial intelligence. According to the company, the fall was caused by calibration issues and the robot is still in its testing phase. They said the machine runs on a 48 volt battery that gives it up to six hours of operation and that about 77% of its components are Russian made with plans to push that number to 93%. They also highlighted its 19 servo motors and the ability to display more than a dozen basic emotions along with hundreds of micro expressions, all supported by silicone skin engineered to mimic human facial movements. During the presentation, CEO Vladimir Vitukin said the robot can smile, think, and look surprised, similar to a person. But after the fall, critics focused mostly on its instability and the decision to unveil something so unfinished at a public event. Right after this somewhat chaotic moment from Russia, China delivered another milestone, this time from UB Tech. The company confirmed that hundreds of Walker S2 humanoid robots have been shipped to real industrial facilities. This is one of the first moments where mass deployment of humanoids looks like an actual thing instead of a marketing slide. UB Tech said production scaled up in mid-November and the first batch already reached their partners. Demand this year alone hit around $113 million. Orders came from companies that want stable, non-stop labor on their assembly lines. Some of the major deals include a roughly $35.3 million order from a well-known Chinese firm in September, another $22.45 million agreement in Sichuan, a $17.8 million project in Guangxi, and over $14.1 million from Mi Ato in Hubei. UB Tech expects to send out around 500 walkers by the end of December and claims it is on schedule. Automakers appear to be pushing this surge more than anyone else. BYD, Geely Auto, Fall Volkswagen, Dongfeng, Liuzhou Motor, and even Foxconn are adding these robots to support logistics and non-stop operations. Early tests show strong performance in both factories and warehouses. One of the standout features of the Walker S2 is its battery swapping system. The robot can remove and replace its own power pack within minutes without any human help. This single upgrade removes downtime almost completely, making it way more practical for long industrial shifts. The Walker S2 is tall, sturdy, and designed to handle heavy objects while still keeping precise finger control. UB Tech says humanoids now make up about 30% of their sales, up from 10% last year which they take as proof that demand is coming from real-world needs instead of hype. Financial results reflect all of this. In the first half of 2025, UB Tech pulled in around $87.7 million in revenue, a 27.5% increase from the previous year. Gross profit hit about $30.6 million, up 17.3%, and losses narrowed by roughly $62.1 million. Their stock climbed more than 150% this year to 133 Hong Kong dollars. And analysts at Citi and JP Morgan still list the stock as a buy with expectations that it could climb past 170 Hong Kong dollars. 
UB Tech was the first robotics company to trade on the Hong Kong exchange back in 2023, and the recent momentum suggests they are strengthening their lead. Even with this large-scale rollout happening, a big wave of skepticism hit the scene when Brett Adcock, the CEO of Figure, commented on a video that allegedly showed UB Tech delivering hundreds of robots. He hinted that some of the robots looked fake, pointing out inconsistencies and raising questions about whether these units were actually operating or just staged. This connects to a broader conversation in robotics where companies release polished videos, but the real-world performance sometimes does not match the footage. Adcock has been vocal about the challenges of true general-purpose robotics and about the gap between marketing videos and actual deployments. That whole thing spilled directly into a heated online feud between Adcock and Agility Robotics. After Adcock posted that a figure humanoid had been working on BMW's production line for five consecutive months straight, Agility responded with a sarcastic comment comparing his claim to someone saying they invented lemon water. Adcock fired back by saying Agility would be bankrupt in under a year. The argument spread quickly, with other industry figures jumping in. A VP from 1X commented that kindness matters more than aggression. Agility responded again with a Ted Lasso gif and a message saying they will check back next November. They also added that despite the drama, they appreciate the work of all teams pushing the field forward. Adcock ended it with a Sopranos meme captioned with, next time you come in, you come heavy or not at all. It is a strange moment, but it shows how intense the competition has gotten as billions of dollars and the future of general purpose robotics sit on the line. And that wraps it up. Drop your thoughts below, hit subscribe and like if you want more breakdowns like this. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.